الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين <تصفيق> الحمد لله uh, The Baalwi Mosque was um, uh, built by my late father uh, Al-Habib Muhammad bin Salim Al-Attas and it was opened by Habib Ali bin Abdul Rahman Al-Habashi uh, in the year 1952. Uh, Alhamdulillah, my father was uh, in Indonesia for seven years and in India for three years before coming to Singapore. And uh, <clears throat> when he was in Singapore uh, during the Japanese occupation and after the Japanese occupation, he started to find a piece of land and to build a mosque and this land was given to him by uh, a pious man known as uh, Sheikh Abu Bakr Ashibli. Um, this whole area belonged to Sheikh Abu Bakr. At that time it was uh, a swampy land and uh, many people do not like to stay here or this area because it was uh, a flooded area, a frequent flooded area. But my father chose this place because he said there was uh, no mosque at this area and this is the one that he's looking for. And Alhamdulillah, by the grace of God, gradually um, more and more communities of people <coughs> came to this place and uh, the mosque was uh, um, um, rebuilt and uh, renovated a few times uh, since 1952. My father himself, um, in the process of building the mosque, uh, he um, he drank uh, the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam adhan in the center of the mosque. But at that time, there was a well, and uh, he was very happy when he drank the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam adhan. Um, that made him more confident that, inshallah ta'ala, his vision and his desire uh, to build a mosque uh, at this place, uh, inshallah, will be fulfilled. He passed away uh, in 1976. That means he was the Imam here for. Uh, for about 24 years and uh, Alhamdulillah uh, I was the only son and um, I took over uh, his place as an Imam and the head of the mosque since 1976 until now uh, about 40 years now Alhamdulillah <laughs> My father was um, one of the Khalifa of Tariqat al-Alawiyah. Tariqah al-Alawiyah. Tariqat al-Alawiyah is the main Tariqah uh, from Hadramaut and the Tariqah that is practiced by Wali Songo or the Nine Saints of uh, Indonesia who that spread Islam towards uh, to Indonesia. All this uh, Wali Songo is believed to be the children of Muhammad Sahib Marbat and Ali bin Ubaidillah uh, and Imam Ahmad al-Muhajir <coughs> and they are all uh, from the line of Riga al-Alawiyah. Uh, my father uh, also is the Khalifa in the Ratib al-Attas because Ratib al-Attas is uh, well read more than 400 years um, from Hadramaut. It is a sect as a, a selection of Dikir, which was uh, founded by the father of uh, Al Attas, uh, Al Habib Umar bin Abdul Rahman, uh, Al Attas Sahib Ratim, um, a very famous person, very famous saint, and 
uh, <coughs> Ratib was well read during his time, uh, especially in Horeida in Hadramaut. And then his students took it uh, to India and uh, to uh, Africa and to many parts of Arabia. Then uh, his great grandsons, Abdullah bin Alawi, which was also the um, um, grandfather of my father from the mother's side. <coughs> and he brought the Ratib uh, mainly to India, to Cambodia, to Myanmar. He brought this Ratib al Abbas and his majlis or his second gatherings. Normally, he read the Ratib. After the Ratib, he also read the, the Maulid uh, Adebay. And then he also read the, the Gasaid, Gasidah, Gasidah, mainly Gasidah al Imam Habib Abdullah bin Ali al Haddad. So, the Ratib, the Maulid, the Gasaid, wherever he goes, this is his practice. But many of this kind of uh, um, uh, practice, when it goes to India, it becomes Tariqah. They call Tariqah. So, <coughs> the people in India, they consider this one is Tariqah al Atasiyah. So, similarly, if you look, we go back to the history of the of the <coughs> of the tasawuf. Uh, for example, there are some uh, ratib al Habib uh, uh, Abu Bakr al Adani from Aden. When he reaches India, they said al Adri al Idrus. They said Tariqah al Idrusiyah. You know, being practiced <coughs> in uh, in India. But, said, uh, but it is just a simple ratib uh, of al Habib Abu Bakr al Adani. And my father was a Khalifa. Uh, he took over from his grandfather, Nabi Ijazah was his uh, grandfather, Abdullah bin Ali al Abbas. And, I mean, this is the grandfather from the mother's side, and also the grandfather from the father's side, Al Habib Ahmad bin Hassan al Abbas. So, from two grandfathers, they are big alim during his their time, they are um, famous uh, scholars during their time. Um, and he got the ijazah from these two uh, grandfather uh, uh, of him because his father died early, he was a yatim and he met and he was being taken care by the two grandfathers so the two grandfathers are close to him and gave him the ijazah although he was young and trained him up Yes, Alhamdulillah in fact, uh, it was reported in the papers uh, that, uh, Alhamdulillah, we were the first person to talk by in English in 1979. And um, uh, I gave the khutbah at Masjid al Kaf in Upper Strangun Road for the Muslim converts. Because at that time, there were many Muslim converts. They could not understand Malay. And they need someone uh, to speak in English, to talk to them in English, to explain Islam in English, and to give a sermon in English. And, um, and they approached me and I said, Inshallah, uh, after the khutbah of Eid, of Hari Rai Haji in Masjid Ba'alawi, uh, once completed, then we went to Masjid al kaf for the second uh, khutbah, or second session. Um, the second session was uh, full of uh, mainly Muslim converts. That was in 1979. And it was reported in the Straits Times and other papers. It was the first uh, khutbah in English in Singapore. Wallahu alam. Alhamdulillah, I told them um, that I will give khutbah in English only once. After that, you must look for people to do it. And gradually, uh, there are uh, trained um, people and there are some ustas uh, coming back from overseas uh, who do speak English. And uh, we do have khutbah in English uh, in Singapore now, practically um, uh, in, in many mosques. And even in our mosque here, we do give photo behind English, but uh, uh, 
uh, occasionally, not not uh, every week, but after a few weeks when necessary, we do. English now is very much spoken in many parts of the world. Uh, let it be in an English-speaking country or in, um, how shall I say, maybe many Muslim countries in the world. And uh, more and more people, or more Muslims now, they know or they speak their native languages, but at the same time, their second language is English. In Singapore, practically 90% or more Muslims, Malays, uh, Indians, and others, Muslims, now more or less, although they speak their first language, I mean they have the native language, but they speak more English uh, in Singapore. And uh, more books, if you look at it carefully, um, are in English, or more good books, because we have uh, so many writers in English. Um, let's say we do have writers in, in Malay, but many of the writers in Malay are regional. Let's say you want to read books in Malay, you find from Malaysian writers, Singapore writers, Indonesian, Brunei, these are the countries who write in Malay languages. But, uh, but even their Malay language are also, there are differences. And not, not exactly the same if you look at Indonesians and Malaysians in Singapore. Uh, Malaysia, Singapore, the Malay is the same, but in Indonesia they have some variety of uh, um, different words used. But English is different. You find many writers, you find people in Europe writing in English, you find in England, you find in America, you find in Australia. So you have more writers and more uh, uh, scholars. <coughs> so we have um, more uh, knowledge to, um, to take from. And thus, you find um, we we have to engage uh, in uh, many fields in English language. Yes, uh, Habib Nur bin Muhammad Al Habashi is um, a pious man during his time, and uh, people loved him during his time. And some of them talk about his um, karama, the experiences his karama. Now, this karama comes word of mouth and for generations. And as a result, um, when, when, uh, when he passed away, uh, the stories spread. When the stories spread and uh, those who are alive talk uh, to their second generations, uh, and people started to um, to learn more and to be close because it has been a practice not in Singapore but in many parts of the world. I mean, uh, a pious man, uh, a pious person, they will always look for uh, a pious sheikh. Now, if they are alive, they will go and meet. If they pass away, they will uh, ziarah. For example, the ziarah makam of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the makam of Imam Shafi'i. I mean, just for out of respect, and then learn their words and everything. And Habib Nur bin Muhammad al Habashi, Alhamdulillah, for the last mm, ten years or so, uh, we had mm, hall in Singapore in Masjid Baalawi of my father's hall, and I created a hall uh, under my father. But I mentioned many of the Salafis' name, not one person, maybe about. 20, 30, 30 percent, and I uh, make it a uh, hall of Habib Nur also together. Alhamdulillah, uh, we had normally Akhir Hamis in the month of Rabi Uthani uh, in Masjid Ba'alawi, and the following Saturday uh, I do in Magam Habib Nur. And at first, uh, during the time of uh, uh, the caretaker there, uh, Sheikh Hassan. <coughs> Um, I told him let us do. He said, "All right, um, for the for the day, I will fix the date." I said, "I will bring the people. I will bring the ulama. I bring the scholars. I bring the speakers." And Alhamdulillah, we have been doing it. Hassan has passed away, but then now 
the others who took them who took over from him, uh, or the caretakers of the makam, we carry on. I think at least more than 10 years, and uh, in the past few years, Alhamdulillah, I think uh, plus minus about 7,000 people from all over. They already know. And uh, on Thursday night is Masjid Ba'alawi, on Saturday is Makam Habib Noh. And uh, Habib Noh, you know, the stories of Habib Noh, I was, uh, I met one of the grandsons of Habib Noh. His name's also Noh bin Abdullah bin Ahmad Salikin. Now, Ahmad Salikin is the brother of Noh of Singapore. So he's the grandson. Now, this Noh, I heard about him. He lived in Penyengat in Indonesia and he has one hand. So I visited him, in, if I'm not mistaken, in 2004. So when I met him, I asked him and he was very happy to see me. He said he had heard about me and he has received my salam many times. He has said my salam many times. And then I asked about his grandfather. I said, what do you know the stories of Habib Noh? So he told me the stories that Habib Noh's father Habib Muhammad was in Penang, was buried in Penang, is known as Keramat Tuan Putih. Keramat Tuan Putih. And then he told me many stories about uh, Habib Mu's father and uh, especially in Penang, um, you know, how uh, he used to travel with his four children and he used to carry a sack behind him and he put, you know, uh, pots and pans and wherever he stopped, he will cook and he feed his children. And then uh, people give him a small hut and he will move at night uh, to see the people, the poor people. And when he found a thief trying to steal, he will ask the thief, uh, he asked the person, what are you doing? I'm trying to steal. Why are you stealing? He said, I'm hungry. Then he said, here, this is five cents. <laughs> So when they give this money, or this two cents or three cents, you know, sometimes they give, uh, so the person stopped from becoming uh, a thief. So, and then he collected them. They all came to him, we don't have a place, we don't have a house. He, they will stay in his hut. So much so that in Penang at that time, uh, that uh, slowly, gradually, uh, it becomes peace. People find that it is uh, no, uh, no thieves around. Then when he was asked, uh, the government at the time was the British government, uh, the government they, they find out, uh, Alhamdulillah, there is this peace, what the causes of it. They said, this is old man. When he explained to him, he gave more or less an allowance every month for Habib No. Habib no. So he said, this is Habib Muhammad. No, sorry, Habib Muhammad. Habib no. So I was looking for the Makam. I said, who is this Tuan Putri? I asked the family of Al Habshi. So many, they could not give me an answer. But Subhanallah, then uh, through some research, between one old man whom I did not meet, but Al Habshi is about nearly 90 years old from part Malaysia, he said, This is man is Al Habshi. Give me this description. Then I said, Go and ask him, where's the Magha Habib No? If it's true, Al Habshi. So, the person who told me about him came back, gave me a description. They belong exactly this one in Kampung Arab. The makam is there, but Nisan Yang Tondong. <coughs> he said, the, the, what do you call it, the, the tomb which is slanting. There was a name there, but it was lost. Name there, but it was lost. Then, when I got this information, I asked some of the students from, uh, I think, to Kubainun Maktab, Perguruan to Kubainun, they are all uh, uh, teachers. <clears throat> so I called them up, uh, please check this one. So the students and the teachers, you know, who used to come here, the professors, you know, they went and they said they found exactly the same. The situation there is the Makam Yang Chondo. So all right, they said I will go. So I went there. Uh, with our friends, uh, Ashraf was with us and a few others. And then when I checked the makam, it is true in the sense that it is just beside this is Habib Arifin, which is supposed to be the brother and also the wife. He said uh, Kupiyama, uh, that was the nickname. 
So when I find out this, <clears throat> because in the past, normally family, it is buried side by side or nearby. So there's great possibilities. Then I ask a few uh, people who do uh, some uh, history. There was one, uh, I think, Said Imran or something. Uh, yes, he was the one who said that according to the history, uh, uh, that um, there's a great possibility that Habib uh, Muhammad uh, lives here and um, he gave all the details and gave all the stories. So when we check, so far, all the facts point out that this is correct and it is the makam is there. So far, we did not find until today any contradicting uh, information. <clears throat> and then uh, we have not uh, did anything to it, but then I said now already a few years and inshallah ta'ala, with the grace of God, we wanted to build the makam. We wanted to, we, the family of the Al-Habshi are, are ready to, uh, to make the makam of the Habib Muhammad. Al-Habshi, the father of Habib Nuh, which is now in Penang, inshallah.